Hi there, my name is Daniel Broadway and this is a tutorial for AETootsPlus.com. Today I'm going to present a lesson that will hopefully clear up some confusion about what is known as linear workflow, also known as gamma correction. I should state that this tutorial's purpose is not to create a whiz-bang effect that will wow you. The purpose of this tutorial is to present a technical and oftentimes confusing workflow in a way that is easy to understand. If you're serious about visual effects compositing, you do need to have an understanding of these principles in order to do your best work. So with that, let's get started. So what is linear workflow? There are many confusing terms out there. Gamma 2.2, Gamma 1.0, sRGB, linear color space, logarithmic, workspace gamma, monitor gamma. Well, I'm here to break it down in a way that helps me understand it and hopefully will help you understand as well. I should go ahead and say that what I'm about to explain is an oversimplification, but for our purposes, it's going to be close enough. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at what linear means and the terms associated with it. Lin, linear, linear color space, gamma 1.0, they really all mean the same thing. It means that the math that After Effects uses to determine pixel values in your image is being processed much like real light values are in the real world. Therefore, you're going to have more realistic composites, um, edge blending, transfer modes, scaling, anti-aliasing, color correction. They're all going to generate a more realistic appearance in your composite if you work in a linear color space. Now let's take a look at the opposite end of the coin. Log, logarithmic, monitor gamma, sRGB, gamma 2.2. They all roughly mean the same thing. In the real world, if you take a light and you double its brightness, then you get twice the amount of light. However, the human eye has a logarithmic response to light and therefore will not perceive it as being twice as bright. Our eyes are more sensitive to changes in midtones and shadows than brightness values. For this reason, computer monitors have a logarithmic output, also known as sRGB, also known as gamma 2.2. 99.9% 9 .9 of the pictures you see on the web are encoded in sRGB and therefore have a gamma of 2.2. Almost all JPEGs do. Same with digital camera pictures, the uh, exception there being a raw camera file which is stored as linear or gamma 1.0. So now that we've had an introduction to linear workflow, let's take a look at a practical example. What we're going to do here is create a composite of fire over a background plate. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and import our, import our footage. And I rendered out EXRs out of Red Cine, um, and this is actually footage from a red camera from the film A Lonely Place for Dying, which I had just finished work on. Um, and the director was kind enough to allow me to use this footage. The great thing about red footage is that it is recorded with linear data, therefore it is already in a gamma 1.0 workspace in a linear, uh, it's already in a linear file. So let's go ahead and import our um, fire here. If you remember earlier when we were talking about JPEGs, we noted that uh, JPEGs usually have an sRGB or gamma 2.2 uh, color space, and that's also the case here. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and set up our color management for our project. So let's double click the 8 bits per channel here. Let's set our depth to 16 just to give us a little better color fidelity. And um, I'm going to change my workspace to HDTV REC709, and the reason being is that when I exported the red footage out of Red Cine, I used this color space to export, although it was a linear version of that workspace. If you're going to stay in the computer realm, you could go ahead and probably use sRGB here. Um, but if you're, if you're doing it for broadcast, it's probably good to stick with this right here. So let's do HDTV REC709. Okay. And now our workspace is set up to be in this, um, this color space here. But what we want to do is linearize it here by clicking Linearize Working Space. And now we can do all of our compositing in a linear space. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And now you'll notice that since we enabled color uh, management, each footage has been now assigned a color profile. And After Effects will try to make its best guess as to what the embedded color profile is. And in this case, it is guessed correctly on both pieces of footage. It knows uh, what they are. But just a good habit to get into is to go ahead and do it yourself. If you if you know the embedded color space, it's good to go ahead and set it up in here so that you know that After Effects is interpreting it correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and set this HDTV 709, even though it won't make a visual difference. It's just a good habit to be into. So let's hit OK. And if you go check here as well on the fire, you'll see that it is already set to sRGB, so we're good to go there. Let's go ahead and start a composite. We're going to drag our background footage to create a new comp. 
And now we have our footage. Uh, looks good. The color is good. Uh, it's not dark, which means we are doing a proper, year, a proper linear composite here. Now let's go ahead and drag out the fire. We'll put it over this car here. And most of the time when fire is shot on black, most people will want to screen the footage uh, because for some time, sometimes the ad will look a little blown out, a little too punchy, and it's just not natural. But the thing about that is, is that screen is not physically correct. It's a hack or a workaround to a non-linear composite. But since we are doing a linear composite, we can set it to add uh, with no problem. And in fact, you should always use add instead of screen in a linear composite. And it brightened up uh, just a little bit, but not noticeably. But this is now a proper linear composite. But let's just for uh, demonstration's sake, turn off the linear settings here. So I'm going to change this. And what you're going to notice here is this fire is going to suddenly blow out and get way too punchy. And see, there you go. This is why a lot of people don't like to use add when they're not using a linear workspace is because it's just too much. It's unnatural and it blows everything out. You lose all background detail. And so a lot of time people will just use screen. In this shot, it looks fine. Uh, you know, you could do that. You could get away with that. But you still have to know that it's just not absolutely physically correct the way real fire should blend. So blending fire is just one of the many reasons why linear workflows are a lot better. So let's change this back to linear and set this back to add. And now you can see that the fire is no longer blown out and punchy even though we are using add. It blends very naturally. It looks very good. Uh, and this is what you'd want. This is what you'd expect. Okay, now that we've got our composite looking pretty good, we're going to get ready to output it. Um, so let's go ahead and select our comp. Hit control M. This brings up our render dialog. We want to go to output module. And we want to take one more look at color management here. It's going to output by default to our working space. And that's not what we want in this case because since we're doing a linear workspace, if we were to render this out, it could have the potential to be dark and not look correct at all on our display device. So what we want to do is go ahead and convert that back to HDTV SER09. Hit OK. And then you'll just render out as you normally would. Uh, this has just been a very simple example, but um, you can get a lot more complex subject matters with uh, linear workflows. You can get into 3D programs how uh, you can do a linear workflow in those, and it makes your lighting and fall-offs and textures and everything look a whole lot better. But that's beyond the scope of this tutorial for now. But uh, I know this has been a lot of information to cram into such a short tutorial, but watch it over again, experiment, play with it. Uh, you'll start to figure out the method behind it and why it works. Um, I'm Daniel Broadway, and this has been for AETouchPlus.com, and I hope you've enjoyed this lesson.